If you have an old printer laying around, you'd be surprised at what you could find in it to use on your model railroad. So let's see what I found in my old Epson printer. Way in the back of the closet in my spare bedroom is a printer that I quit using long, long time ago. Depending on the brand that you have, you may find something different in yours. So this one is an Epson. So if you have a Canon or an HP or anything else, you may find something different in your printers. But basically, you're going to find components in there with ribbon cable. You're going to find connectors. You're going to find gears. You're going to find springs and you're going to find motors in there. So let's see what I found in my Epson. Well, I think I got more junk on this workbench than I do on the other workbench. So I'll clear the workbench in the train room to take apart the printer. This is nothing like Walt World's bench. My goodness. Well, I think I got enough room for the printer now. One of these days we're going to go down into the dining room, get rid of all that dining room furniture because we never use it anyway. And set that up as another train room with a workbench. So we'll have them everywhere. How's that for an idea? All right, now, now it's time to put the printer in here and work on it. Well, we're looking at the back end of it, but we have a, an extra power cord right here. And I'll have to open this up, but a nice long USB cable that we could use on our Adorino. This is a little bit longer than the one that you normally get with an Arduino. So that's the first thing. And oh, there's a battery down in there. Hmm, how'd that get there? <laughs> Okay, well, I took the cosmetic covers off of the front and all they do is just snap right off and I busted a couple of the tabs on there because I'm not going to be using it again. But anyway, we have some push buttons on here and we got a nice little screen. I mean, all these are nice little push buttons and we're, we'll see if we could salvage any of them. Okay. And this one's taped down, so that's taped in there. So that's a little sub-assembly that we'll take apart and see what we can do with later. But anyway, we'll get into these parts in here as soon as we could figure out how to get all this apart. Just have to untape these, disconnect the ribbon cable. It's connected right here. This thing right here, that's just a cushion, so that should just boom, pop out of there. So there's the ribbon cable. Now let's pull the rest of these wires out. And as you can see, these are one, two, three, four. So that's a four pin, and you'll notice on some uh, shields they have four pin connectors on there they're used on uh, stepper motors the uh, some stepper motors have four pins some of them have five and some of them have six the bipolar has two coils in them so they only have four wires I need two hands <laughs> to get that one loose, so you'll see it once I get it off. All right, now we got the lid apart, and this is the scanner part of it.
on this one motor on the side we got the gears on it and attached to the gears is this wheel and I don't know if you could see it but there's little slots in there and I don't know how many slots you have this sensor right here and this sensor is detecting how far this gear is turning and that is going back to the circuit board to determine or how far to run this motor it brings the paper down this way and up to print through there and it'll every time it would go so far to print the next line and then that's what all these marks are on here for but that right there would be a good index for a turntable right there well attached to all these gears right here as it it turns was this little and this uh it's a peristolic pump and what it does as it turns it squeezes the tube around and pushes the ink out this is the hose that was going to all that uh, absorbent pads but I can't take this off I took this off right here and this is a little well underneath that uh, table right there and then it has a bunch of ink in it I just washed my hands a little bit but that's what this is right here a peristolic pump which we don't need unless we're trying to push fluids through at a slow rate we used to use those to pump chemicals into the machines washing machines where I worked but they were a lot larger than this this is a very very small version of it and I could take this off and show you what the inside of it looks like and basically all it does the hose goes all the way around and this thing pushes up against the hose and squeezes it and pushes the liquid through okay that's my little lesson for today on peristolic pumps we got a circuit board here where we can get some components off of it we got a nice little power supply off of there and I'm going to, not in this video, but this right here, there's a lot of good little things in there that we could use like as stuff in a factory. And there's some switches on here. I mean, the switches on here are just a little tactile switches that you find on a breadboard, but we may be able to do something with that. I got two DC motors, a couple of switches there some sensors that go on transmitters and i'll show you what they look like there is one there that goes inside a wheel and counts the little ridges on the wheel to control the motor this is all the stuff right here that's getting thrown out and this right here we got a lot of gears okay this not the stepper not the servo motors here but i got a lot of gears here I got another one of those sensors that goes inside that and I'll show you how it works. There's little ridges on here, probably about a thousand ridges and this sensor sits right there. And this is what transports the paper and stops it. So it counts the little ridges on there. This little sensor right here counts those ridges and I uh, got a lot of screws, small springs, some big springs, and springs are always good. It's free energy, a lot of gears, a little deal right there I'm going to hold on to for a little bit. And some belting. Okay, now this belting, I used to work with this stuff, but on a much bigger scale. And this was to transport the ink cartridge back and forth on there and there's another one in the scanner on top okay and we'll take that apart on part two of this
but the biggest thing is getting this thing apart to see what we can salvage out of it. And so far, oh yeah, and then we got that, this gear, all these gears right here. And that has to be pushed down to operate the entire thing. I'm going to keep this just like it is right here and maybe disassemble this later on because this is going to take a little bit of uh, playing around with to get the gears off of the shaft. And it took me, I would say, almost two hours. And the next time, if I have another printer that I need to disassemble, I'll know what to do first, and that is to move the carriage to the center. Power it up and try to get this new carriage to the center of it because that was the biggest thing that held me up. In part two of this, I'm going to take apart the power supply. Okay, I got a power supply, I got a circuit board down there, and I got the scanner down there, and I know there's another motor in there. So we're going to be taking that apart, and I'm going to take the power supply apart so we can see what voltage that is. We'll be able to use that on our model railroad, I'm sure. We got quite a few parts out of there. We got a lesson about stepper motors and peristolic pumps. So we're on our way to be using those parts on our model railroad. Is it worth it? Ah, that's up to you. I probably could have taken it apart a little bit faster if I would have moved the ink cartridge to the center. That was the biggest holdup in it. But it's up to you to tear apart what you want to. I have a few other things that I tore apart too. In fact, this video is probably eight months old, eight or nine months old. I took this back in April, early April of 2018. And I had the most of the video prepared. I just didn't have a beginning and ending for it. So this is the ending for it. So until the next time, we'll see ya.